Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you the daily Tesla report for Monday, October 30th, 2023. But before I walk you through the charts, as usual, just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. Share the content, if you would, with friends and colleagues. And check out WickedStocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this one. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, the long bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube. That is eight a month that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. We're always looking for at least 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can check out all of this for no cost for five days. We offer a five-day free trial up front with a Wickedstocks.com subscription. So sign up for Wickedstocks.com. Check it all out. If you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. On with the charts. Let's take a look at, um, we'll start with the weekly chart, of course. Uh, just show you that um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, in a wild week, earnings week for um, Tesla, we settled clearly below the 252.49, uh, not a one-year channel bottom. It goes back to January, so about a 10-month channel bottom that set off a sell signal that within two to three weeks is expected to yield the 203.11 rising two-thirds speed line that was uh, reached last week. And within a month or two, uh, possibly within three to five weeks, the 108.43 descending channel bot bottom. And this is our overall objective, remains our overall objective. Uh, and I'll get to that in a moment as to whether we'll see that. I will just sort of mention that if we close below not only 203.11, but there is also a 50% downside Fibonacci uh, at uh, 200.55. So if we reach... Uh, if we close below 203.11, any day this week that does, yes, need to be by the 1% margin. But I'm really throwing out 200.55 as our 1% margin. 203.11, uh, the 1% violation of 203.11 is um, 201.08, I believe. I'm good doing the math here. 2.03 uh, minus 203.11 should be 201.08, yes. So... That 200.55, 50% uh, Fibonacci, it's not a Fibonacci, actually. I, I think it's just a Dow theory. I know that we call them Fibonacci's. Fibonacci's are really 61.8, 38.2. I'm not going to get into that right now. But if we close, <laughs> this is a long way for me saying, below 203.11, uh, it, we should also add 200.55. So I might as well just say that if we close today below 200.55, we do enter another sell signal that is uh, expected to yield this uh, overall objective at 184.43. That could possibly be this week. With the high volatility week, we could continue south to 184.43. That might spill into next week. You know, if we wind up settling later in the week below 200.55, I think that would spill into next week, that 184.43 descending channel bottom. You can see that actually well-defined here. Now, this is the daily chart. And so what is at 203.11 on the weekly speed line is 203.75 on the daily speed line. That is part of the range, really. But it is a minor point only. I'm just making room for 203.11 on the weekly chart to 200.55 as the 50% downside retracement. If we close today, for instance, below 200.55, I'm going to say, yeah, we probably will within three to five days test that 187.59 descending channel bottom, which was once again on the weekly chart, uh, 184.43. You can see that well down here. So I think that kind of defines the downside pretty well. I will also say and remind you that bottom picking the 200.55 to 203.11 area is not a bad play for those of you who like trading both sides of the market and you're more in the kind of the two to three week swing trade dynamic because, you know, holding above this speed line at 203.11, and once again, that's in the daily chart at 203.75, will keep 229.92 in reach this week, perhaps. I'll get to that in a moment. And yes, over the next few weeks, three to five weeks, we could rally all the way back to 252.53. You know, if this channel bottom wasn't here, this would be our de facto longer term support at 203.75, 203.11, once again on the weekly chart. Um, but I do, in terms of these wide swings, 
I'm making way for 187.59, 184.43 uh, on the weekly chart shown here. Okay, so that is kind of the big picture. You can bottom, you know, whether you're uh, a day trader buying 203.11. I know this can get confusing because on the chart it says 203.75, but that same speed line on the weekly chart is 203.11. So you're lowering it just a little bit. Whether you're buying the 203.11 down to 200.55 region today for the day, whether it's for the week, three to five day swing traders, perhaps one to two week swing traders back to 229.92, or whether you're perhaps bottom picking it, uh, you know, as we move through November. And from here, we could rally back into the low 250s. You never really know. We, You need to allow for the low 250s as a possible upside. Uh, uh, not, I don't want, don't want to call it an objective, but a possibility. It does become a clear objective if we were to close in the coming day, in the coming week, above this 229.92 descending one-third speed line. In fact, this is the two-sided framework I'm going to show here uh, for the week itself and into next week. It is bottom picking 200.55 to 203.11 and selling 229.92, going short at 229.92 into next week, falling back perhaps into the 203 handle uh, within a full week of testing 229.92. In fact, I'm going to continue with the upside right now and show this former channel bottom that we almost rallied, uh, we rallied short of actually Tuesday of last week. Monday was the low, spike low. Uh, and then uh, Tuesday, we pushed almost testing this former channel bottom at 221.32 before falling back again to reapproach the speed line. I can zoom in just a little bit here and show this. 221.32 is our day resistance. And let me talk about the day itself. On the way up, now last... Um, you know, Friday's high was 214.20. You can see up here, it was a little higher. The Thursday high was, I don't know exactly, but all I'm going to say is 215.49. That is a 5 eighths upside Fibonacci. So if we open unchanged or a little higher today and we trade up, and we can following uh, the, the near testing really, of the speed line. Now, we did come very close to testing it actually last Monday. So I'm going to call that a test. But following that, you know, holding above 203.37, 203.75 rather, 203.11 on the weekly chart once again, we'll keep 231.32 in reach over the next day or two. And I will say today, if we push or open above 215.49, that 5 8 Fibonacci over the last five days, right about here, a 221.32 in reach today where we can top out for the day and fall back into the 203 handle again uh, within three to five days or doing so. So for day trading, 215.49 is kind of your day ceiling. And below which we can fall back into this 203 handle longer term support down to 200.55 on an intraday basis. If we happen to push through 215.49, I see a good low for the day, 221.32, then in reach today, where we can place a daily high. And this is a good day trade level. Day traders are basically buying 203.11 and uh, perhaps selling 215.49. And then if we push through 215.49, um, you know, you know, you're going long again, or maybe you're still long from 203.11 in anticipation of 221.32, where profits can be taken, and you could perhaps sh set a short position as we move into Tuesday, Wednesday, where we could fall off again back into the 203 handle. If we close today above 221.32, I don't see that. That would be a high volatility Monday. It might happen. And if so, if we close today above 221.32, we should on Tuesday actually test this trend-defining speed line at 229.92, uh, which can, once again, contain buying on a weekly basis. And so this is, once again, I'm back to the one to two week swing trade where you're buying the 255 to 203 11 area and selling at 229.92, going short at 229.92 in anticipation of the two of the low 200s. And then finally, and I've said it before, but if we do close above 229.92, uh, then we should see this 252.53 former channel bottom within a week or two of doing so. And this will be a significant upside test longer term. And I'll be talking more about that if we approach 229.92 in the coming days. Um, once again, closing below not only 203.75, but really 200.55. I will show that once again on the weekly chart. You've got a weekly speed line at 203.11 to 200.55 that should be respected for its ability to contain selling uh, for the week itself. And if we close, normally I would say below 203.11 by the required 1% margin, which is 201.08, I would normally be saying that in the situation. But because the 50% retracement is 
was so close to it, I'm going to say hold out for 200.55. So if you're bottom picking 203.11, you're, uh, you know, I, I think, if especially if you're a one to two week swing trader, you are uh, covering that sh uh, long position and actually consider reversing and going short below 200.55, whether that's buying 185 out of the money puts that don't expire for at least a couple of weeks, because that is the next objective. And keep in mind, that is the overall objective anyway, per two weeks ago, when we settled below the 252.49 channel bottom, we've been anticipating the 184.43 channel bottom as a three to five week objective. And uh, so we're a couple of weeks into that right now. We may see that this week, the third week in, if we close today, for instance, below 200.55. So I'll let you play that as you see it and how you trade it. Um, but the 184.43 formation, well suited to absorb selling through November into later year. And from here, we can rally back, you know, into the 250s again. That would be a, a channel top in the upper 240s, low 250s, which correlates presently well with this former channel bottom. But we need to see what the low is before we can make any strong assumptions. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I will say, I guess I'm not leaving it at that, that if we do close the week below 184.43, by a 1% margin, I don't even know what that number is just yet, that does present a significant uh, sell signal as we move through the rest of the year and into Q1, the following two to three months, then likely to retest the 101.81 January 23 low, and I think, and then some as we continue into later Q1, but I'm not going to go there just yet. Uh, because I don't think that's going to happen. I think we've got solid, solid bottom picking in the mid 180s. And you can have at the low 200s. Uh, you never know. This might be it to the downside. Uh, that becomes confirmed uh, once again if we can close above 229.92. And then I think we have a good low into later November. I'm going to leave it at that for uh, Monday's Tesla report. Please click like, share, subscribe, and check out wickedstocks.com. You have a great day.